today we're out to take a look at some of the shorelines of Thurston County and some of the development that's taking place along our shorelines. What people need to consider when they're buying a piece of waterfront property or developing a piece of waterfront property is these sites are semi-unstable because of the existing geology. To remove the existing vegetation and plant a lawn, for instance, has a significant impact in terms of the stability of the top of that bluff. When people do this, oftentimes what they'll find is a portion of their property breaking off at the top and dropping down at the bottom. You'll get slide events that you wouldn't normally see on adjacent pieces of property. While grass is attractive, it does provide problems for marine bluff property owners. But one of the problems is oversaturation, that it does require a certain amount of water to stay green. This can also add a lot of water into the soils, which could cause problems later on. The other thing is that people sometimes use chemical fertilizers on their lawns. Those can then run off, and that becomes a non-point source of pollution to the Puget Sound. We chose not to have a lawn because we enjoy the plants that bring in the wildlife, and it also keeps us from having to pay for the maintenance of a lawn and the chemicals, and gives us more time to enjoy the water. I think it's really important for me to make sure that I keep clean up after my pup's waste and I always carry plastic bags because the people call for them. There's so many of us living here now, it's really important to clean up after our pets. One dog makes a big difference and I can't just say, oh well, you know, one time doesn't matter because it does matter. Everything matters. It's important to leave as much of the native vegetation in place and to site your home back far enough so that it's not in peril. We believe that area to be located behind the two to one slope of the Marine Bluff, and even further back, is actually safer. Oftentimes, by moving it further back, you gain some elevation and you also gain some view. Now, the native vegetation is very important. The roots grow well on these soils, they hold the soils together, and they're also drought tolerant since they've always been there. They're not going to be something that's going to require a great deal of maintenance. The other important thing is the amount of transpiration and the amount of water that they take up and take out is important in terms of maintaining the stability of the geology on the site. So it's important to leave as much of the native vegetation as possible. It's important to us when we build our house to build it far back from the beach and leave the trees intact. We even have a tree in the deck. The trees are more than just protection in the winter and the summer. They help stabilize the bank. They help the water retention, they help filter out the water and clean it, and the trees provide a lot of the insects for the animals or the fish that live in the water. Also, the trees are a view for us. They're beautiful. They dance in the wind and they bring us harmony and each tree has its own personality. We love to go down to the beach and look at a view of the, of the Olympics, but the trees are part of this place and make it special. The other plant we see people using on waterfront property is English ivy. It's an invasive species. Not only does it take over areas, it also kills all the native species. So we'll see large trees being taken over by the English ivy and eventually dying. It also hides problems. Once the plant is in place, you don't really know what's going on underneath it. If there's cracking of the soil somewhere that might indicate some, some future slide activity, it will not be visible to the property owner. In several cases, I've seen uh, hillsides of English ivy drop down to the beach because of the weight and the shallowness of the root system within the uh, ivy. If you've got English ivy, you need to remove it in manageable sections and replant with erosion control native plants that are more suitable to the site. It's important to prevent surface erosion by mulching the bare ground until the new plants are established. This used to be total ivy, and if I didn't know about ivy, um, it probably would take over, it would climb up these trees, it would go everywhere. And the thing about ivy is it becomes a monoculture and just takes over all the native plants. The local weed control specialist can help you get rid of ivy, but this is what I did in my, my situation. First of all, I got rid of the ivy by removing it from the trees. I just cut off the base, and then I went to the ground level, and I just started pulling out rolling it back and pulling it out and some of it was really deep so I had to really rip out the roots and that was um, a little bit harder but it was a good exercise and gave me more muscle strength and it made me feel good to know that I'm helping the native plants in this area thrive. It's important to get the ivy totally out. I think once you get the hang of it it's kind of fun. After we took the ivy out, it was important that we put something back in so that the ivy didn't come right back. So we planted um, native plants and 
They provide food for the wildlife and they also help stabilize the bank. And it's just wonderful watching the four seasons with the hummingbirds feeding off the current and the salmon berry and enjoying the native plants that belong here. People believe that the bulkhead will protect their marine bluff from a landslide. However, the bulkhead will not protect the upper bluff. It only protects the erosion at the toe. The upper bluff is still subject to a slide event, and this is often precipitated by the removal of vegetation and poor drainage methods on the property. Additional erosion could occur because of a wind, freeze thaw, and oversaturation of soils caused from the development itself on the upper part of the bluff. When the slide occurs, it either takes out the bulkhead by pushing it forward onto the beach and burying it, or just overtopping the structure that's at the toe of the slope. People see a greater amount of erosion occurring adjacent to a concrete bulkhead. This occurs when you get the energy reflecting off the concrete structure and then down on the beach. Not only does it erode in front of the bulkhead, but it also erodes the adjacent property as well. Then the adjacent property owner is in with an application for a concrete bulkhead indicating that they have erosion now that they didn't have before because of the structure and they need something to protect their toe and so on and so on and somewhat of a domino effect. The use of an alternative method of toe protection using root wads or other large woody debris with some rock helps provide a habitat for the upper intertidal area as well as are deflecting energy away from the toe of the slope and in the meantime the bluff has been able to provide sediment to the beach so that the can be maintained in a natural state. We see a lot of erosion and some slide activity occurring primarily in areas where people have not protected their upland properties by using some sort of stormwater drainage devices such as a, a tight line or a way of transferring the water from the built environment down to the beach successfully. Typically the tight line will transfer the water from um, the rough drains as well as where there's an impervious surface that the water will then go into the drains and then be conveyed to the beach. If not correctly installed, these lines can cause more problems for the upland property as far as slide activities. In the past we've seen slide events occur where the tight line breaks because of the type of material used, in which case now they have a very nervous homeowner who's located precariously on top of a marine bluff where the house was 50 feet from the top of the bluff, it's now 20 feet from the top of the bluff. Once water's been placed into a tight line, it can move quite fast through the line down to the beach. That's why it's important to have a dissipator at the end. Oftentimes this can be like a wire mesh bag full of rocks or can be some more organic method using woody debris and rocks together. It's important to dissipate the water to avoid the scouring away of sediments at the upper tidal zone that forage fish depend upon. People want access to the shoreline. We prefer that property owners work together or create a common access in a location that has the least amount of impact along the shoreline. Problems associated with shoreline access are large stair structures having to be constructed, requiring the removal of a lot of native vegetation and possibly adding to the instability of the marine bluff. By creating a shared access at maybe the lowest point along the shoreline, they can provide a multiple usage of one stairway as opposed to say four or five and that reduces both the cost and the maintenance for all the property owners who use that access. People who have waterfront property oftentimes think they need a bulkhead to create a landing to get to the beach. One can easily place a structure at the toe of the bluff without having to have any type of bulkhead whatsoever to uh, gain access to the beach. I can come home from a busy day and it's just um, so refreshing to hear the eagles and see the loons and grebes and, and the canopy and not have to worry about pruning or my bulkhead, but letting things just naturally take their place and just watch what happens. It's, it's, a, it's just a blessing. Maintaining trees along shorelines is critically important to protecting property. The trees' canopies intercept rainfall and their roots remove water from the soil and transpire it back to the atmosphere. The roots also keep many layers of soil in place. All of these factors increase the stability of slopes with trees on them. Trees such as these have interconnectivity with their canopies and root systems. 
So when people cut down all their trees except one, that remaining tree has lost its support network and is much more likely to blow down in the next big windstorm. It's best to leave clusters of trees as they appear in nature and to address any problems using pruning techniques. People usually top a tree because they want to open a view or because they're worried about the tree being dangerous. But topping is not the solution and can actually exacerbate the situations people are trying to improve. If a tree really is hazardous, then it should be removed or pruned by an arborist. Topping will just create an entry point for disease and hasten a tree's death, making it more of a hazard. Or the topping will encourage a tree to produce a bunch of weak branches, which can be very dangerous. If the tree isn't actually a hazard, but the residents want more peace of mind, selective pruning techniques can be used to remove poorly attached branches or reduce the tree's wind sail potential. If you want to open a view, there are several pruning techniques an International Society of Arboriculture certified arborist can use. Topping can actually cause more obstructions of your view because the tree will try to replace its lost canopy with vigorous new growth right below the topping wound. And in fact, this growth will actually be bushier than what was there in the first place. Let's look at some types of selective pruning that can open views and reduce wind sail. Behind me we have uh, very good examples of crown raising or skirting. This is where they actually remove the lower portion of the canopy of the tree and it works very well opening up a view past the trunk um, to whatever the focus is behind that. Crown raising or skirting can be applied to younger trees. You remove the lower portion of the canopy to redirect energy into the upper portion of the canopy to allow the tree to grow faster and eventually move up out of your view. Window pruning is basically taking out a small section of the tree's canopy to open up a specific view. Generally, whether you're windowing or doing some of the other view prunings, you do not want to take more than 25% of the canopy off the tree in one growing season. But drones are broadleaf evergreen trees that are especially important along shorelines. They are salt tolerant and their evergreen canopies can capture rainwater in winter. Plus they have a deep widespread root system that is so strong it can actually penetrate hard pan. So madrones help to remove water from slopes, which can prevent deep-seated erosion and slides. Some people are often worried that madrones are a hazard tree because of their tendency to grow out from a slope at an angle or even almost horizontally. But that's just growth habit, and it's nothing to worry about. You rarely see a madrone that's pulled out of a marine bluff, and in fact, their roots are so deep that even a dead madrone will still provide stability to a bank for many years. Many of the madrones along our marine bluffs are suffering from various canker or viral infections. This can be treated by a climbing arborists. They can actually prune out some of that dead wood and enhance the health and uh, structure of that tree. But if you have a very healthy madrone, I would not really recommend pruning any of the branches off of that that could in fact actually invite disease or an infection through that pruning cut or that open wound. If you do have a question about whether a tree should be removed or the proper pruning techniques for your situation, contact an ISA certified arborist to come out and take a look at your trees, assess them, and recommend a prescription for any trees needing work. Many times, people try to take trees out themselves or rely on someone who has some equipment. Tree removal and pruning is dangerous, and it may not be necessary, so always get advice from an expert. I can make a difference in my own yard by gaining knowledge, helping nature be what it's intended to be here, which will provide nutrients and a healthy ecosystem for all that lives here. And that, what more can you ask for in life?